guy's uh, pretty cool, but I think it'd be even cooler if it was a little bit bigger. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm James, also known as Just Some Nerd. And uh, this guy right here, this BB-8 that you saw at the beginning of the video, I've had this guy for about a year, and this is this is one of my favorite toys. I love this thing. Uh, this is the um, Hasbro Hero Droid, I think is what it's called. Uh, it's it's awesome. I love that this thing. It's so much fun to drive. Uh, I've taken it to a few conventions, and I you know drive it around at the cons and. You know, people just go nuts. They they run up to it and you know like treat it like it's a puppy. Uh, you know like literally just like run up to it and start petting it. And they're like, oh BB-8, it's so cute. And it, it's just so much fun. And I love this thing. But the uh, the cosplayer in me is always thinking about like how can I how can I up this? How can I make this better? How can I you know upgrade this? And so. When thinking about that, I discovered the BB-8 Builders Club, and what that is is a, an online community of people that build full-size replicas of BB-8, and what they've done is created these super accurate 3D printer files for a full-size BB-8, and so earlier this summer, I started on this project and started printing all these parts to make BB-8 with the, the thought process of, I'll make the head, and if the head turns out well, I'll go and look into making the rest of the body. And so I've been kind of distracted with other projects, and BB-8 has just been sitting on the shelf for a while. So I thought this weekend would be a good time to get out these BB-8 parts that I've been working on and do a little bit more work on them and see if I can't get the head close to finished. Okay, so what we're going to be doing today is working on the dome. And I've already done a lot of the finishing work on this. This was 3D printed on my CR-10S. This was printed all in one piece, but the builders, the BB-8 Builders Club has this file broken up into four and three parts so that you can print it on smaller printers. I actually did originally print a smaller version of this split into four parts. And I was nearly finished with it, and I dropped it. I dropped it once, and it broke into a. It broke into a bunch of parts just like that. So I decided that that's not really going to work for me. I need to. Putting it in one piece is definitely a lot sturdier than putting it together with multiple pieces. So I reprinted it in one piece. So I think this is a lot sturdier than what I had originally. So the big head sits on top of this ring here. So that is this ring here. And then this goes on top there. That's the silver part here. And then this, that is the very tip of his head here. And we have one of the antennas here, the big eye part, and this smaller eye part. So what I'm going to be doing today is trying to finish this stuff up as much as I can, uh, cleaning it up a little bit more. I've already done most of the cleanup on this stuff, so it shouldn't need a whole lot more, but it needs a little bit more. And some of it, well pretty much all of it still needs at least a little bit more paint, and some of it needs a lot more paint. Some of it hasn't really been painted at all. But, so that's what we're going to try to do today, get as much as the head done as we can. Okay, the first thing I need to do before I go any further is make sure that these dials fit in here. And I think I've gotten these, I think I've sanded these holes out enough so that it'll fit in here now. Yeah, so I think those are both good. Uh, originally, it's, it's really difficult to, when 3D printing stuff, to get things like this that are supposed to fit together to fit together just perfectly and so what I did was sand these out with the Dremel and so now they fit pretty well. So here on this part the, that goes around the edge of the outside of the dome uh, these seams still need filled in a little bit so I'm gonna go over those with this stuff, this Timea spot putty, I think that's how you say it. This stuff is kinda like super glue so I recommend you be really careful and don't get this on your hands. 
I've already done several coats of this Krylon satin bright white paint to the main dome, but it could use another coat or two. And I'm going to do the same thing for this top piece. And then I'm going to go over these two eye parts with the same satin black paint that I've used in a lot of my projects. Okay guys, for this little antenna on top of his head here, I think it would be cool if it looked like it was made out of a little bit different material than the rest of the body. Uh, I can see it being kind of like rubbery. So what I think I'm going to use for this is the stuff called Plasti Dip. Uh, if you're not familiar with Plasti Dip, it is like a cosplayer's best friend, especially if you're making like foam armor or something like that. But in this case, we're going to use it to coat this little antenna so that it looks kind of rubbery. One of the things about Plasti Dip is it works a little bit better if you heat the bottle up first. So I'm going to put a little bit of water on the stove, heat it up. I don't want to bring it to a boil. I just want hot water, not boiling water. And I'm just going to let my can sit in there for about 10 or 15 minutes to warm it up and it'll spray a little bit more evenly. Okay, the filler putty that we put on this a little bit ago is dry now. So we got to sand that smooth. And we could just you know, hand sand it, but I'm going to use this electric palm sander. So believe it or not, you can use electric sanders on 3D printed parts. I used this palm sander all over the dome when I was first printing it and smoothing it out and you know, it, it really kind of makes life easier when you're trying to sand out those print lines. Once I had the worst of the lines smoothed out, I went back in with this little needle file to help get into the cracks. Alright guys, so the big dome is done drying now, so it's time to move on to the next spot. And that's why I brought this little guy with me, uh, not just to play with, but we're going to use him as reference material for where to mask off these orange parts. Uh, if you guys watched my recent video on repainting the Ghostbusters Ecto goggles, you know that I can get a little bit carried away with the masking, and I think we might be in store for another episode of I Get Carried Away With Masking here. So let's get this down and over to the workbench and get started with another round of masking. all done so we're ready for the orange paint. The paint I'm using is actually not the paint that is recommended by the BB-8 Builders Club uh, but I wanted to use something that was off the shelf uh, that I didn't have to order special and I didn't have to put on with an airbrush. Uh, I will link in the description what I used as well as what they recommend you use. For the parts that are going to be silver first I'm doing a coat of gloss black and then once that gloss black is dry we're going to go over it with our metallic silver. Alright guys, our paint is dry and it's time to start taking our masking off. Uh, I've heard Adam Savage say that removing the masking on something like this is like opening a Christmas present. Uh, it's kind of like that I guess, it's uh, like opening a very tedious Christmas present. But either way, I'm excited to get this off and see how it looks. All right, now we're gonna remove the masking from the ring too. And here's how everything looks so far. I've got these little baby magnets. I got these on eBay from China and they cost like, I don't know, 50 cents or something like that. The magnets are gonna go into these little holes here and hopefully that, hopefully they will fit and that will hold the lid on. Just put a little drop of super glue and place the magnet in and then repeat that like 12 times and then repeat it 12 more times for the top. And now using that same super glue, except this time I'm using the brush applicator, I'm going to put a little bit of glue around the inside of that silver ring so that I can fit the white part that's the tip of his head inside of it. Once that glue is dry, we can place it on top of the dome and add our antenna. And now using the same glue, we're going to attach the two eyes. Now 
The final thing I'm going to do today is using a little bit of five minute epoxy, I'm going to mix that up and use it to attach the dome to the base and then I'm going to hold it in place with some clamps until it dries. Alright guys, here it is so far. I think that's all we've got time to work on today, but I'm pretty pleased with the uh, progress on it, especially since this is something I've been procrastinating on since the beginning of summer. Um, for the dome, there's still a few things that need done. The, there's two little kind of dome ball things here that goes in the eyes, so I need to get those. And the little hole here where the little LED goes, I need to put something in that. And then this bottom part, I, I didn't show you guys me working on that any, but that's in here too, but it still needs a little bit of cleanup done, but it's, it's coming along pretty well. Uh, and of course, the other antenna that goes here on the back, I still need to work on that but those are projects for another day. If you guys are interested in building a BB-8 yourself, I'll have links in the description to the BB-8 Builders Club and the different supplies and paints and stuff that I use so that you guys can find that and order it too. Um, the BB-8 I was playing with at the beginning, uh, if you're interested in getting one of those, I'll put a link in the bio to that as well. And the other BB-8 toy that I really like is the Jack Specific Big Fig BB-8. Uh, it's the same scale as this guy, just without the uh, RC parts. It's really cool too. So if you're interested in that, I'll stick a link down in the bottom to it as well. If any of you guys are also building a BB-8, I would love to see pictures of it. Uh, you can send them to me on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter. I'll have all my social media links down below too. Uh, if you guys like this video, consider liking and subscribing. Uh, one of my friends told me that I'm not a real YouTuber unless I'm telling people to smash the like button. I'm not really sure what that means, but I've heard people say that before. So Elise, if you are watching this, smash the like button. That'll make me a real YouTuber, I guess. <laughs> uh, but anyway, thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for more BB-8 and I'll see you guys next time.